In this video, we're going to talk about converting between the azimuthal convention and the quadrant convention when you're talking about strike. So first, we're going to take a look at these two Bruntons. Um, they're in the same position. Both of them have east on the left, west on the right, north uh, where the star is, and then south down below that. Uh, you'll also notice that I removed uh, magnetic declination from both of these, so I've got the index pen set to zero in both compasses. And the only difference between these two compasses is the way that the um, that the graduated circle is notated. So on this side, this is an azimuthal compass, which means that we've got zero below the index pen. And as we move toward the E on our Brenton, we move around the circle and we go to 90, then we go to 180 in the south, we go to 270 at the west, and we come up, we, we go through the 300s, and when we get to 360, we never actually see 360 because we're back at zero. On a, and that's azimuthal notation, which is between zero and 360. If you're looking to buy a Brunton um, and you're working between these two and you're a geologist, I highly recommend doing the azimuth um, notation and getting an azimuthal compass. Nowadays, we're not just recording things in our field notebooks, we're writing them for the purposes of digital conversion. So we're putting them in um, a GIS, and GIS tends to work a lot better with azimuthal compasses and azimuthal notation. But that doesn't mean that you didn't inherit a quadrant compass or you have a really sweet husband that for your fifth wedding anniversary tried to tried to buy you the thing you wanted and <laughs> got you a quadrant compass that's what happened to me um, uh, but you know he he ain't he had a good thoughtful gift in mind and I ended up with a quadrant compass out of it it's okay because I know how to do the conversion so on a quadrant compass you have zero at your index pen if your magnetic declination is zero. And to either side of that, you've got 10. To either side of that, 10 is 20. So if we were going to count around to the east, south, and back to the west, on a quadrant compass, we would go zero to 90 at the east, down to zero at the south, up to 90 in the west, and down to zero to the north. And the reason for this is that when you're working with an azimuthal compass, the goal is to express kind of radially how far from north you are. So here in the azimuthal compass, we're always talking about relative to north. Are we zero degrees relative to north, 90 degrees relative to north, 180 degrees from north? We're always rotating around relative to north. In a quadrant compass, though, we've kind of given ourselves two starting points, north and south. So we're saying how far from north we are and in what direction, and how far from south we are and in what direction. So usually you'll have to convert between these two, especially if you're in a, de in a department that has kind of a mix of Bruntons, where people have um, accumulated Bruntons over time. Some people will prefer one or the other. And you're going to be left having to know how to use both. So notice here, just before we move on to actually looking at um, what these look like when we start to convert, notice that 90 and 90 are both east, 180 and 0 is south, and that 270 and west are in the same positions. And the reason why... Uh, I want to emphasize that is that when you make yourself a conversion chart, which is what I recommend doing, you may not have that same lineup. So here, for example, this is the conversion chart that I am going to work with. I've got zero, and as I move to the right, I'm moving through 90, 180, 270, and back to 360. Notice that that's the reverse of what it is on my Brenton, and that's okay. This is kind of a mirror image of my Brenton, and that's fine because the point of this is to have a con like a conversion wheel. It's not to have um, an exact replica of my Brenton. So let's just make a note on here that north is going to be at the top, east is over here, 
I've got south at 180 and I'm going to have west at 270. So on my on my azimuthal compass that's fine I would just use the outside. So what's that look like in the quadrant compass? Well on a quadrant compass I would have 0 here, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, and then I would get to 90. But on your quadrant compass, it never really writes 90. It'll just write the letter E. All right. Now we can do the same thing coming up from the south. 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. And then we're going to do the same thing going toward the west. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 70, 80, and 70. Nope, nope, not 70. Okay, so now that I've got these two wheels set up, it gives me the ability to kind of directly compare in a graphical way uh, whatever I've got in azimuth to whatever I want to write in quadrant or vice versa. So let's do some practice problems with these. We're going to start with a question that says, translate the azimuthal convention to the quadrant convention or vice versa. So we're starting with south 15 west, which is quadrant notation, and we're going to convert to azimuthal notation. So I'm going to start at the south, and I'll move to the west 15. So my strike, or my orientation, because I suppose this could be a trend, is something like that. So south 15 west is the same as starting at 180 and counting 150 or sorry starting at 180 and counting 15 degrees to the west so here 180 to 190 is 10 plus 5 is 15 over so this is 195 okay the next example is north 22 west So north, we're moving over 22 to the west. So my orientation is something like that. So I'm going to expect an answer in the high 330s. I'm counting 22 degrees over from north. So this is 10, 20, 22 is 338. All right, north 39 east. That's again in quadrant. We're going to go north, but we're going to go 39 to the east. So something like that. So we can expect an answer in the high 30s. And this is particularly easy. Anytime you've got to go quadrant in the northeast quadrant to, to azimuthal, it's, it's real easy because we're just going to go over 39 and we end up with 039. Now because you are working in three digits, when you write something in azimuthal notation, go ahead and put that zero there if your answer is only two digits or let's say you were working with um, north 9 east, you'd write that as 009. The reason why you do that is just to let yourself know that you did not screw up. You were taking into account that there were three placeholders or three positions that you could put numbers in and you're letting you, yourself know that you didn't just accidentally take a dip or something like that. It, it's a way to remind yourself that you were taking an orientation measurement. Okay, 
Next up is 0, 1, 2. So notice that 0, 1, 2 is in azimuthal notation. So we start on the outside here and we're going to work our way in. 0, 1, 2 is 12. So that's our orientation. And that's 10, 12. So that's north, 12 east. All right, 257, that's again in azimuthal notation. So we go all around our wheel until we get to 257, which is right here. Okay, so now you gotta do a bit of thinking on how you're gonna do this. So 257 is pretty close to the west, and we know that when we write in quadrant, we can only start with north or south. Here we're closer to the south, so our first place holder is going to be for an S. We're moving from the south in that direction. Now we've got to get to 257, and we're moving to 257 from 180. So there's a couple different ways you can do this. You can either say 257 minus 180 and do some subtraction. So that's 77. So there's 77 tick marks between south and when we get to 257, meaning that this answer is going to be south 77 west. Or you can think of the difference between that and this, this 270. So you could have counted down 10, 11, 12, 13, and then done 90 minus 13 and gotten to 77 that way. Um, it's how it, whatever helps you think through this, you can you can use that that method. If you're in my class, if your professor is different and they want you to do it in a different way, you do it a different way. 332. 332 again is in azimuth. Um, we're going to come up here to 3312. That's our orientation. Okay, now 330 is closer to north, so our first placeholder here is going to be north. And how far from north are we at 32? Well, we are 10, 20 degrees, 28 degrees. So north, 28, and we moved to the west. And the other way you could have done this is to do that subtraction method again and do 360 minus 332. You would have gotten 28, and you'd still write north 28 west. Last conversion example, let's do 170. I'm going to come down here to 170. Mark that. That's my orientation. And here I'm closer to south, so south is going to be my first placeholder. And I'm 10 degrees from south. I'm 10 degrees to the east of south. So south 10 east is my answer. All right, so again, if you've got to convert between the two, I recommend making yourself some kind of wheel like this. Uh, you can just Google azimuthal diagram I think is one way to get to it or um, you can take a an image of two Brunton compasses and and superimpose them on top of each other and get to it that way but make yourself some kind of little tool like this um, until you get really into the hang of converting between the two anyway hope that helps bye all